Welcome and thank you for joining Happy Hour Holidays, your go-to podcast for business, entrepreneurship, and life stories. If you're out there wanting to build a dream, make sure you do it or you'll be stuck building somebody else's. We're here to inspire and motivate. So today on the show, we got obviously the host, Manny Fresh. We got our co-host, Sean Fabre, and in the house. Let's go. We got a bunch of motherfucking rainmakers up in this pussy. <laughs> <laughs> we got DJ Chris John. What's up, world? We got Daryl James, our public adjuster with Hunter Claims. If you have a claim that's denied or you have property damage, don't fucking wait. Call D. Hunter Claims. He'll be here. What's up, fellas? Otherwise, you will get fucked. You will What's get up, guys? Fucked. Thanks for having me. Oh, oh yeah. D, you got to really explain to him the day. Yeah. How they could possibly get fucked, and insurance's whole job is to not pay them. But you don't got to get that far into it yet. Introduce yourself to the world. So, uh, you know, thanks again, guys. Uh, appreciate being here. I am uh, Daryl James. I am a public adjuster uh, with Hunter Claims. We're a local uh, public adjuster firm here in Tampa, right here in Drew Park, uh, right by the Tampa Stadium. Uh, go Bucks! Go Bucks! Yeah. Go Bucks. You know what I mean? we still got Baker. Baker, he's doing good after that anchor roll. We're glad to hear it. But uh, that's where we're located, right here in Tampa. Um, even though we're right here in Tampa, we uh, our services are throughout the state of Florida. We have a bunch of licensed uh, adjusters that are all licensed and uh, are able to work throughout the state of Florida. Awesome, D. So tell us before we get into the nitty gritty of what a public adjuster is. Let's talk about your backstory and how you got inspired to to you know build uh, empire in this and be a business uh, business partner in this. Uh, what got you started from the beginning? Like what what did you do when you got? Let's just start yeah, off in you, high school. You know, like after high yeah. school, where'd you go from there? Yeah. So um, after high school, you know, you have expectations that your parents want you to do this and that, right? So it was college for for me, right? But uh, we went to the 13th grade, which is also known as HCC over here in, <laughs> on Dale Mayberry in, in, in Tampa. So, uh, you know, I, I kind of did that, tried that for a little bit and, you know, wasn't everybody's forte. And I kind of learned that. So um, I was always a, a go to go to school, go to work type of guy. So school wasn't working out. I found a niche in corporate. Um, one of my first corporate jobs was with a payroll company um, back in 1998. So pretty much got involved with them uh, doing miscellaneous stuff. I was a young kid back then, 20 years old, just kind of wanted my foot in the door at a nice corporate location, getting a paycheck. And it was a cool place, you know, small little family, family company. And we were cutting payroll checks, uh, about 5,000 payroll checks a month um, throughout the local Tampa, St. Pete, Clearwater area. And um, I stayed there. I stayed there and I did that over the next 21 years, believe it or not. Same company. One person, very 21 loyal. years. Yeah, very My, and, and loyalty, that's another thing we can get into, you know, later if you want. But, you know, that's kind of the gift and the curse of me, right? Loyal, loyalty kind of keeps you back from your true progression in life. You kind of, uh, you started off perfect, right? You, you you make somebody else's dream or do you make yours? Um, do you realize that at a young age or do you have to go through some things in life before you kind of get the awakening moment, right? So <clears throat> my story is, you know, not to advance the story too quick, but... 1998 through 2017, um, Hurricane Irma hit, rocked us, hit the Gulf part of, of the state. And my my organization, you know, we cut payroll checks, right? So even though there was hurricanes, we were expected to get people's livelihoods to where they needed to go. So we moved our operation from Tampa, literally gotten Jeeps, cars, Cadillacs, whatever people had available to them, put machinery in cars and moved it over to the Orlando office. And we did that. We made magic happen for people going through a hurricane status. But, you know, it was a lot. It was a lot. It was taxing on, on the body, on the family who kind of needs you at the time. You know, uh, we're going through a hurricane, but you're helping somebody else. Going back to helping somebody else when your family's sitting there like, what about us? You know, <laughs> <laughs> we're here. So, um, again, you know, working for cool people, you're getting a good salary, you're getting benefits. You know, you're just kind of coasting because, again, the word is complacent here. I think, you know, people find complacency and they're comfortable with that. Is that wrong or is that right? You know, no, no, uh, you're right. Because you're right. Listen, especially if you're running that show over there, yeah. yeah. Like I you know, know, you work I mean, for a, years. Yeah. A paycheck is medication for you not to chase your dream. It's a painkiller, right? That's what a paycheck is, and that's what a lot of people don't understand is that employers only pay you so you don't leave. So that's kind of what it sounds like what this payroll company was doing for you, maybe giving you bucks tickets on the side, say, hey, thanks, and maybe just enough to where you're like, okay, no, no, I'm not leaving. I'm that's not leaving, right? That security, which well, sometimes yeah. can be false. Yeah. Because yeah. you never know when you're going to be let go, but it's, 
you know, they give you the security uh, and kind of take away your freedom. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and it's all true, right? So we'll talk about, you know, youngness and naivety and what you don't know is what you don't know until you know it, right? So again, you're in corporate lifestyle, you're making your bills, got something on the side, you're living all right. You're going you out, kids. you know, nothing, you know nothing, nothing's wrong, yeah. but you're just living. You're kind of in this hamster wheel. And, Which some uh, people, they're cool with and that. And it's fine, right? Yeah, because some people need a too. structure, right? Some people yeah. need to get up at seven to be at work for nine and be home at five and making dinner at seven. Whatever your yeah, working, scenario working is. Yeah, for yourself is not for everybody. It, yeah. it really isn't, right? Yeah. So so, so corporate world, it might it, it, it might be the answer yeah. for, for half of us or, or more. And again, we don't realize this until certain things happen in your life. For 99%. For 99%. That's a good, very good poster right there. <laughs> so, uh, anyway. So, the hurricane so happens. The, the hurricane you happens. You have to develop a mobile office in Orlando, which then takes you. Does it, does it open your eyes and you get introduced to. Yeah, well, 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 there's a little bit more behind that. Um, it, 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 that hurricane made me realize that. No matter how hard you work, no matter how much effort you put forward, um, that corporate guy has got his stamp on what your deserving paycheck is going to be. And going back to your Bucks tickets, right? They might know that you're a Patriots fan. Sorry, Tampa fans. Uh, I, I am from Boston originally, but oh, you're not uh, a Patriots fan, uh, are you? I, I was. He got the best of both fucking worlds. He could tell. Dan right. Randall could... fan never win a he... Super Bowl. <laughs> this guy, Tom Brady, <laughs> how many? How, six? Seven. 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 Six. Seven. Seven. Six. 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 With the Patriots, and then team, one with Tampa. One you're where he lives, the you're freaking welcome. Bucks. The, guy, yo, you're welcome, bro. Hey, let's put it this way: Bill Belichick is a joke. He's Curren a joke. Currently, bro. I'm embarrassed. I got egg on my face for all the Patriot fans. <laughs> I am so sorry that they're going through this, man. I mean, but Tom, oh. Tom, you Bill knew Belichick what was up. Was revealed. Tom, Tom knew what was up. I really he, thought it was Bill Belichick. Tom, I Tom, so did I. Tom knew what was up, but no. he had one more in him. <laughs> yeah, and he Dang. came here and got it. Man, he may so, have had two more in him. If it wasn't for the defense against No, the you mean the divorce. Ah, yeah. what D was it? Yeah, it was the divorce. But, uh, but also, I mean, he, he he says he retires. Gronk decides to retire. Maybe Gronk doesn't retire because that was a big thing with that, us. Yeah. We didn't have a tight end going down the middle and distracting everybody else from Chris Godwin and Mike Evans. And now you because you retire prematurely, you have some people leave the Bucks, offensive linemen and shit like that. They leave because they're like, all right, well, Tom Brady's out. I'm going to go cash out because we just won the Super Bowl. If he would have just been like, no, wasn't gonna... he within the second year? Gronk stayed, didn't he? No, 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 no. no. He was no, there he was one year, bounced. and that was it. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah, because Brady re announced retirement, and then Gronk's like, well, back. I'm out too because yeah. I want to play with my boy. And yeah. then Brady says, oh, I unretire after going to a Manchester United game in England and watching Ronaldo, and then Ronaldo says something to him, oh, so I heard you retired. And he's looking at this 37-year-old who's just balling out. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, oh, maybe I unretire. But at that point, Gronk's already, you know, doing what he was Gronk done. does. The he one who done. fucked him the most was his wife. I don't care what no one says. I think that he fucked himself state. on that one, dog. Mm, nah. mm. I, so my wife and I had discussions about this. And I feel like, hey, Giselle had a very strong opinion about her husband being <laughs> home. And the viciousness of the sport was very real. It's yes, been very sir. real. Well, not and, so much lately. Well, you know, they've been, they've been pussified for sure. Yeah. And going back to, 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 to Brady's comments recently, I don't... I like, yeah, I, I like those. Comments. I like those comments. I love them. I, I, I do. He's catching a lot of shit right now he because why? He's catching like right. He's catching shit right now because people are saying, "Well, why didn't you bring this up while you were playing?" We well, can't. he he was playing in the common game, guys. He just won a Super Bowl. He just won a freaking Super Bowl in modern game. Yeah. So, anyways, I digress on time. I could talk about my boy all day long, <laughs> but it was just sell because, and I'm not saying it's anybody's fault, right? So, so being in a married relationship, it is a two way road. Yeah. You got to give. You got to take. It's not going to work unless you do. Now, being football, right? So Brady and I actually started our careers around the same time too, not to be corny, but kind of going through the progressions of relationships and how the time spent during a certain amount of time in your career and being split between home and work, right? This is another thing that we juggle as men, as women as well, you know, just as entrepreneurs in general, this is something that we all struggle with is how do we do the family and how do we do the work and how does everybody get our time and how do we not crumble inside and still be strong and all that good stuff. But with all that said, Giselle, I believe, put an ultimatum on the table. Yeah, I believe they that, probably yeah. agreed to it. And Tom was like, you know what? What am I going to do? And change his mind. You know, people are allowed to change their minds, right? Of course. Well, think, he still it, had something in him. Well, yeah. no. He, well, did. he, he also it, signed that 10-year contract with Fox to be uh, a killer contract. personality. It was $357 million killer contract. that, you know, he pulled back on. And now 
he's redoing. But talking about spouses and, and the hardships of maybe a transition, you went through a, a similar transition where uh, you stopped doing the payroll company and then you were uh, maneuvering over to being a public adjuster. Yes, and there sir. was a time frame where that was difficult and yes. maybe put some hardship on your relationship and maybe were you just... working both jobs at the like working oh, your, your corporate quit. job say quit well there there, there was a lot trying to create yeah. you know going through school going through your certifications for public adjusting so so doing this thing with a plan there was there was a method to the madness believe it or not right so you just don't transition out of something you've been doing for 21 years and just leap into the pool sometimes you do and sometimes that's what people need okay i agree first of all just have most people learn to swim because your dad threw you in the pool while, <laughs> your, mom, a, while your mom was cussing at a, your dad. And now your dad's looking at your mom like the motherfucker's swimming. <laughs> <laughs> Shut your mouth, bring me a beer. Anyway, <laughs> so, <laughs> so I, you know, I, I digress on that. But, you know, so the transition for me was Irma opened my eyes as to it doesn't matter how hard you bust your ass for these guys. Your salary is what they are, you know, and your your Patriots tickets to the Bucks game is your bonus. Thank you. Um, you, you made it through face. the storm. Uh, we made uh, X amount of million dollars while we did it. Bravo. Yeah. Merry Christmas. Did they give this you a is, bonus? Uh, I got, yeah, pa I, tickets. I got Patriots no. tickets <laughs> that year. The Patriots played Don't here. Don't count the tickets. Besides I, I did get a bonus. Okay. I did get a bonus. But obviously in your eyes, and, like, and it's because, and, and here's why. Above and beyond. Well, here's why. The bonus came because at this time, at this position and the company's lifespan, we had a good core group of, of VPs and leadership. We have people that saw the efforts, saw saw the work, and and made right on it the best that they could. And I've been through the scenarios where the VPs were pure shit. They were there as bona fide babysitters. They didn't know what the hell was going on. They were just there to make sure that the employees were doing what they needed to do while the company morphed into their next whatever they were going to be. That is the thing that kind of opened my eyes and said, you know what? There's something more to this. I just had, you know, my daughter was four years old. I'm, you know, new dad four years, you know, she's nine now. But um, there was things that I was looking at from a higher perspective. Like, do you just stay here and be complacent? Or do you give this girl, this new, this four-year-old daughter of yours, everything that she deserves and that you can give to her? And uh, until you have a kid, and um, this was me before the kid, there was no, you, you didn't live for anything. You live for yourself yeah. and that next little, whatever you're going to do that was fun, that life experience, whatever. But now um, that is for my daughter, you know, um, my Google picture is my daughter people ask me who's that i was like that's my boss that's who i get it for <laughs> and that's who i do it for every fucking day and uh that's no lie you know that's that, that's my shit and she's gonna stay my google picture what about the wife ever she's my bomb too i mean she's my rock so going back to that right so let's go back let's go back to the my, to my wife so uh, leaving corporate you have to plan for this public adjuster thing and uh this public adjuster thing i didn't really know a whole lot about it but i have a friend who is an attorney and i have another friend who doesn't know this attorney and they both were talking things about public adjusting and my brother knew this attorney and they would just kind of talk about it. I'd hear this stuff in the background. It was just kind of like background noise to me. And I was like, dude, I'm just, it's, it kind of got me, even though it was kind of background stuff, but it was transitioning myself. You know, it's kind of just listening to everything around me. And I looked into it and I had the conversation with my wife. I was like, this is what we got to do. We got to bite the bullet because this thing is not something that you just jump into and start making money. In some scenarios, if you go work for a big corporation, a big public adjusting firm, you might be able to get a small salary and make a commission. I don't know how the pay structures are today, but that wasn't the road I wanted to take. I wanted to dive into it, make maximum for myself, my family, and make this transition worth it. So the conversation was in 2019, I'm sorry, 2018, uh, was, hey, going to hang it up, going to hang up the, the suit, right? And uh, we're going to take 2019 to morph and transition into this public adjusting. And what that means is I've got to study. I've got to get my licensing. I've got to get CEUs under my belt. Um, I've got to get accreditations. And there's prerequisites that you have to do in order to get this. Again, it's a lot of things that you have to, to line up and do. So, um, and after you do those prerequisites, then the next major thing is that you got to find somebody who's going to take you under their wing and apprentice you. Little did I know that that was going to be the hardest part. I self-taught myself all the stuff that I needed for my first license, um, took that test, passed it with flying colors, um, and I was ready for my apprenticeship. And I called the big guys around town, and, you know, big guys are big guys. You know, I work for corporate. I know how it is. You know, the phone, they don't pick it up. It's your loss, not theirs. Uh, so I couldn't find an apprentice. I couldn't find somebody to take me under the wing. At the time, uh, and for a while, Miami 
kind of had a black eye on them for, for public adjusters and what the Miami adjusters were, were doing through hurricanes. And I won't get into that, but um, it was not the best look for public adjusters in Miami just because of what they were known for. But because of my trouble here in Tampa trying to find an apprenticeship, I reached out to some folks in Miami and they had some availability. So I went back to the wife and was like, hey, um, good news, bad news. Found an apprenticeship. They're willing to take me, but I got to go to Miami for, for three months, apprentice. Then they'll send me back home to finish up my next three months with somebody here in Tampa. It was hard, you know, because, again, we're a young family. You're just trying to figure stuff out. And uh, she agreed and that this was going to be tough, you know, because this was her salary versus what we had saved. And uh, we would make it work because it was a year, right? And again, but it's like, you know, you take a lifetime to build up to a savings and little do you know how quickly does that, dwindles, it, it just down. dwindles when you need to tap into did it. Did you have family down in Miami or did you have to stay at home? No, this is going to be, they have, no, this, is, this is all on you, right? Yeah. So this is the other thing, right? This is all on you. Before you get into it, before you find where you're going to land this journey, you're on it, man. You're on it. Nobody showed me what to do. Nobody told me what to do. Um, you had a hundred percent commitment, and, 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 and that's what it took, and right? Sacrifice, and and that's a hard thing because again, when you do two decades of one thing, right, and that's what you know, and that's what you're good at, you discredit yourself into what is the future and what you could potentially do for yourself. But what I quickly learned, man, is that the one person that you're not going to fail is yourself, yes. right? And when you have a family on top of that, I'll be damned if you're going to fail your wife and if you're going to fail your kids. Hell no. That was not the option, right? So I did what I had to do. You figured it out. I, I figured I figured it out. I figured out my my story, right? Everybody else's story has got their own little wiggles and waggles, but that was my story kind of getting into it. So that commitment was made, right? I was heading down to Miami, packing my bags, kissing the wife, hugging the kid, like, shit, fuck, <laughs> sucks. <laughs> but we'll be back. We'll be back. We'll be back. You know? Three months later. Three months later, yeah. right? Well, I also wasn't a person who was very involved with LinkedIn and shit, but during this time, you get very familiar with things that you've never been familiar with, right? Yeah. You throw yourself to the wolves pretty much like, me expose myself to this social media, to this LinkedIn. Packing my bags, man, and I get this ding on my phone. It's this LinkedIn banner, and uh, it's Richard Hunter from Hunter Claims saying, lunch at Rocco's Tacos. Oh, wow. And with <clears throat> that, we will be right back. Like, comment, and subscribe. Hold up. Fine. All you can find us on every social media platform. And if you got questions about public adjusting, or maybe you just want to talk to the host or the guest host, or D, just drop a comment there. We'll reply. We'll see you in a moment. Welcome back to Happy Hour Holidays. I know you were really close to busting that nut, oh. but. <laughs> D's about to, you know, finish it off for you right now. So, D, uh, you meet Richard Hunter, or you're about to leave to go to Miami, and Richard Hunter calls you and says, Rocco's Tacos. What happens next? And, and just quick, Richard is short for Dick. So his last name's Hunter. Dick Hunter. Big Dick Hunter. Big, big Dick, Dick Hunter. Hunter. That, that, that's hilarious. And he's the big head honcho that, Hunter that, playing. That's absolutely hilarious because there's a whole other story behind the Dick Hunters. <laughs> and yes, I said it plural, but uh, I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll get into that. In there's a, two a, Dick Hunters? Listen here. We'll, we'll get into that Are in a moment. Are guys? <laughs> but also to show you the type of career D had, like that company that he was working for, <clears throat> the payroll company, it, it was sold how many times? At least five? Oh my goodness! Oh, I stopped shit. counting after about five because. Uh, but for just, him to stay on twenty-one years, yeah, speaks to the type yeah. of person he is, type of employee he is, yeah. type of job he was Loyalty, doing there. Yeah. Twenty-something years, his division or him. How did you not like get try to get some stock options or something like that? So, oh, let's go back to nineteen ninety-nine or two thousand. So the first sale was from Southeastern Companies to this small little company called Global Employment Solutions out of Denver, Colorado. And uh, the VPs of that company came down to our little office here in Tampa, 225 West Boulevard at the time. It's a college now. But they were like, we need each of our employees, each of our global employment solutions employees to write us a check for $1. What? Yeah. Really? $1. I don't get it. Me neither. <laughs> but we did because we had an opportunity to gain 
stock option. Invest in the company. And invest right. in the company. All right. So at the employee level, I guess at the W-2 level, yeah. um, hey, give us a dollar and maybe we return you a favor in the future, right? Now, that's what we knew. Again, young, dumb, full of what? <laughs> Come. Okay, here's a check for a dollar, right? And uh, at the time, we didn't realize that the directors and the VPs were getting this sweeter deal, but I think they were mandated to throw in like 50 Gs each or some shit like that. Um, what they were trying to do was save the company but we didn't know. They were oh, trying wow. to charade it, but they're trying to make it kind of like a fun little cool little thing. So uh, to advance this story real quick, so that dollar check in 13 months time, um, we've all had some pretty good returns on our money. But if you can tell me a return that you've had on a dollar that returned you a thousand dollars in thirteen months. Damn, I'd like to know about it because you should have put in ten dollars. Yeah, y'all. but they didn't fucking tell us. <laughs> yeah. They didn't fucking tell us just that we had this chance. You know, just give me a dollar. We just need a dollar. No, no, no. Just and I, you know, I don't know what their deal was. They didn't want to spook us or whatever. But I, I think it was just supposed to be a fun little game. Yeah. And through the company, they maybe got one hundred and fifty bucks in one dollar checks from everybody that was the W two, and then the directors and above. They probably contributed collectively. Two to three hundred thousand, and it was enough to keep the doors open, keep payroll pumping. And if you don't know about the payroll industry, it's a cash cow. It's an enormous cash cow, but you have to be at the investment level to see it. Um, every sale, I mean, there was multiple millions Doesn't of dollars. The employer being pay the payroll, though. I mean, like, why would a payroll company be suffering? I mean, how would they go under? So, 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 so there's or? one answer to that guy. Guy, I don't care what industry you're in. There's one answer to that. Mismanagement. Fucked up management. Yeah. And how many managers the, were there? I fucking stopped counting, bro, because exactly. it was a circus show. My deal was, y'all are paying me. <laughs> y'all are paying me to do this shit. I find it comedy in my day to find you guys running around cussing each other out, the fucking round table. Come back. You need this report for fucking what? For fucking what? Anyways, let's not get into that yeah, shit yeah. because that's not what we're here for. Yeah. We're no, here. No, yeah. We're here. But just to, to let to you know, he was an incredible employee for twenty something years. Lived through the yeah. sales of I don't know how many times the company being sold, and now you find yourself in Miami. Fuck that! It's time to ride or die for my family on my own. I'm about to go get it. Get you know what or die trying. You're yeah. in Miami. Yeah. You're forced to social media, LinkedIn, and all of a sudden you get a ding. From your boy, Big Dick Hunter. Big Dick Hunter. <laughs> Where are we at? Richie Rich, what up, doggy? So then what happens? Uh, so Richie Rich and I, we meet up at the Rocco's Tacos, and we just start shooting shit and what I was doing and what I was trying to do with my life and what his company was about. And what was awesome is and how life is like a full circle of a circle. You don't fucking realize it, bro. Like one day you're going to see your tail again, but you're going to have the experience behind you to do shit with it. Yeah. So here's where I'm at with Dick Hunter, right? So tricky dicky. Tricky, 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 tricky. We, 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 we finish our lunch, and at the end of the day, we knew that we was fucking, we was foxing with each other. Um, he's my gingerbread boy from North Carolina, <laughs> right? So he's a redhead ginger guy, but uh, some of the best friends I've ever had. You know Mike, man. You know the, oh, North, yeah. the North, North Carolina boys are just something special, right? And you, uh, you know whether they're bullshitting or not, right? And I'm a spade, right? I've been calling motherfuckers spades for how long, bro? Yo, yeah, I, I got no hair on my tongue, so I will come home and tell you who the fuck you are and why yeah. I think this way about Since you. Since I know you, and I don't, I don't need to be your friend, bro. Like, and I'm not a dick, you know what I'm saying? I'm not a dick, but my time is worth something to me, and I'd rather spend it with motherfuckers like you, yeah. like y'all. Yeah. And if you don't want to fucks with us, then we don't want fucks with y'all. <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted to fucks with Tricky Dicky, and uh, Tricky Dicky, bro. In this meeting while you're at Rocco's, yeah. are you explaining to him that you're in the apprenticeship? Yeah, bro. I told him many, everything. How many more months everything do you have that we just point? pretty much covered in this last however minutes we've been talking. Tricky Dicky got my ear full. How many right? more months and, do you uh, have at the time with your apprenticeship? So I found Tricky Dicky in April of 2019. Well, he found you. I, well, yeah, I like it. I like it. I but like are you it. one month so, in? Two months in? I am no months in. Oh, I, this is right I, at the beginning. I, I, I'm just now meeting a motherfucker yeah. cordially. You go down to Miami. No. Oh, no. didn't go to Miami no. because no, oh. no, no. Are you guy. motherfuckers following the story? Yes. He said, said you were in Miami. Miami. No, no, I did not no, say that. I did not. I did not say that. Shit, he's not with you. He said he was about to go. Run the tape back. I was I was packing the bags. Let's do a progressive instant replay. Okay, I was packing the bags. I I had bitten the bullet that yo, this is what. Me and the family is going to have to do in order to pop shit off. Mm. Okay. So this is the commitment that we made 
maybe a day or two prior to this notification going off on my phone from Tricky Dicky Hunter. While he was still in Tampa. While I was still gotcha, in Tampa. Gotcha, gotcha, okay. Okay. So the meeting went very well, needless to say. I, I was that kid who was so happy that I passed my 620. That's the license you have to take. It's the 620. I had gotten like a 97 or a 98 Damn. on it. But I thought that was good, you know, but it's like a boom, boom. No, it, it, it takes some studying. It does. I don't I don't discredit the test, but I studied for it. I got a nice, I brought, I brought my test paper with me to show him. <laughs> you were proud, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I just, I, just, I just, he, he was I, like, you didn't get a hundred. Yeah. I just want a motherfucker to know I was real. Yeah. You were serious. You know I'm saying? You I was serious, serious yeah, bro. You took it and serious. You studied. Yo, you passed and, with fine colors. And if you had motherfuckers that was at the at the starting line with me, I want you to know that I'm I'm a shotgun ahead of them, bro. Yeah. Let's yeah. Let, let's yeah, rock. Yeah, yeah. Let's rock. Did you did you so, ask him like, my man, ninety seven? What the fuck did you get? Did you ask him that? Ooh, what nah, did he but get? he knew what time it was, bro. Yeah. He knew what what did he, he get though? He, he he's a G, bro. I mean, <laughs> Tricky Dicky, he's a G, and he knew what time it was. He I knew what time it was. He's younger than me. He's younger than me, but he's. He's an entrepreneur. He's uh, built some businesses yeah. in the past. He's not new to business. Yeah. Um, but this public adjusting thing has this opportunity mm -hmm. here in the state of Florida. And um, it, we got to strike. We got to strike while uh, people don't know about us, which is why we're here to kind of educate yeah. people what this is and why we're here. Uh, it's a very important time because uh, everybody knows about Hurricane Ian and everybody knows about um, the state that we live in, right? And the issues that we have as homeowners. So um, long story short, coming back to 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 not going to to Miami was tricky. Saying that you know, yo, we're foxing with each other. So I pretty much blew off Miami right away. I say, yo, wifey, you know, good news, check this shit out, you know, da da da. So um, this this roller coaster, bros, like you just going through it, man. Like emotional mm. shit. You're like, fuck. Mm. But these are the things that you experience. So so those of you who have not gone through it just yet just know that you know the best self is not reared until you've been through the trenches and when you feel like hey, you're at your downest moment you're really not bro it's probably like a notch below that but this is where you find out what you're about you know and this is where i found out what i was about because it was four and a half months before I found out somebody who was going to apprentice me, man. Like I had done all my studying. I got all my 620 licensing done. It was like two or three months. I'm like, all right, what's next? What's next? It's going to be easy. Pop. Let's just mm -hmm. knock out. Let's do the yeah, check marks. The Let's you're do the, the check ball. marks. Let's knock them but off. Now you right? got to depend on someone else. Now you got, it. right? And that's where the problem comes. You got to depend on someone else. And it's always been hard for me to depend on somebody else, well, right? You because. Have to sell yourself. Hey, what you you know, and, and, and me, I'm not a salesperson. I just tell the truth because I feel like I'm too stupid to remember my lies. So if I. <laughs> Bro, if but I also the people have I no time bro, for you, if, 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 I, if I tell the no truth, bro, I'm never be in trouble. Unless they're getting hit off some type of way, you know. No, I get that. I get. But so you never lie, then you're just like me, bro. I never. It's real lie. deal. I'm yeah, a real filter. deal. You know the biggest, yeah, the biggest you, lie, and because only because my daughter's not allowed on podcast, the biggest lie in my life right now is Santa Claus. <laughs> oh, so shit. I might be him. I might. What not about be... the tooth fairy? Tooth Fairy still rocks him, bro. She just lost two in a row. Tooth, break, tooth Fairy's fucking going broke. <laughs> yo, Tooth Fairy needs a fucking loan. They don't give a dollar anymore. Yo, How much you, you give it? Like, my, 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 my like daughter's, a hundred a tooth? Yo, my, my, my daughter's last tooth came out in her Invisalign. Oh. It was stuck inside of her Invisalign, and it popped out. She was fucking crying. She's usually a trooper with losing teeth by mm. now. She's a champ. Oh, well, what are you like, doing putting fucking braces on somebody that's losing teeth, dog? That's what the orthodontist said. And her teeth are fucked up. See my teeth right here? You see my teeth? They are way more fucked up than this. <laughs> my mom waited until I was 25. It's when she could do it. Bless her heart, my mom. I was 25 before my mom could put me in braces. But I have a girl. I have a duty. Uh, yeah. Right? If yeah, I had a boy, I'd be like, yo, let me help you uh, <laughs> fix that shit. But I got a, I got a gorgeous girl, man. It's yeah. my duty as my, my, yeah, my yeah, as a dad that she's got the 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 best mental. And that's young. That's young because yeah, I had my first year you know, with the high school. Seven, but you're like, nah, we're gonna take care of her early, early. Yeah. Well, the orthodontist also told us it's gonna be a two stage process. You know, so we need to do some shit now. And when she turns 13, we probably yeah, need to fucking go visit her again. Yeah, ripping like, you off, dog. Yeah. I like them. I like them. I don't want to plug them just yet. I don't know if we do them. Plugs, nah, but nah, I. Nah, nah, <laughs> You can plug whoever you want. No, no, not unless he gives you a great deal. Yeah, yeah not yet. I was like, yo, 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 Doc, I'm looking for a little straightening up, yeah, too. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. So maybe, uh, so where, you, where was I? You, you, were tricky, Rick. you, you, you find your man, your company. He obviously wants to take you on. The vibes are great. The relationship is great. What happens? Yes. <laughs> so you're about so, to step through the so, fucking door. So, so I don't want to get into the rules and regulations just yet, right? So there's a whole nother, there's so many chapters to this, but. 
when you're in a public ju adjusting firm, you can only have so many apprentices under your license number at a time. Mm. So I kind of had to wait two or three months for my window to open. But I was like, cool, I could bite that bullet. We still got a little change in the piggy bank. Yeah. Um, I found my motherfucker who I was my fucks with. Right, so that was a ready decision that I'm Plus, not going to Miami. Plus, it would be faster if you had to go rent a hotel. Absolutely, bro. Yeah, so I, so all that shit was on me. And you know? your wife was is, was she, working. Correct, right, right yeah. correct. So you know, we just budgetized, and again, we had to really, you know, you, you ramen noodles. And bro, you don't realize that you live a lifestyle. I don't care. And if your lifestyle is ramen noodles, and you have to digress from that, bro, you live a lifestyle, bro. Yeah, you have yeah. to fucking sacrifice no matter where you're at on this chain. So uh, April of nineteen, dogs. I would tell you it was July. July, August of 19, before I officially became an apprentice with the clock ticking for my six months to be up, right? So for the sake of the conversation, let's call it August, that the, the clock starts ticking. And six months will put us into February of 2020 of my apprenticeship being oh, over and right us getting into uh, me being into my new profession and doing what I got to do. So you just hit it. You just hit it on the head, right? It wasn't just me. The whole fucking world was, was presented right with this thing fucking COVID, called yeah. COVID. Damn. And if y'all remember, right, everyone wants to call it March of it 2020. But it wasn't. But it wasn't. But it wasn't. It wasn't. Here's what I remember vividly in my head. Our homeboy, Ramsey. Yeah, Ramsey. Shout Ryan, out Ramsey Lahan. Ramsey Lahan and Ramsey! Brian, Brian Aponte. Hey! Brian Aponte. Hey, those, are, those are my dogs. And Ramsey's actually one of the guys who gave me my first fucking look at work, bro. Thank you, Ramsey. I love you, bro. Um, I love you, bro. Everybody shouts him out, but he never wants to come on. He's the He's guy the in disguise. I love how he lives it. He's the guy in disguise. I love how he lives it. He lives in a skyscraper. Don't ever come out, bro. Don't ever come out. Keep it how. Keep it G, like lasagna. Silent. <laughs> this guy keep a G like lasagna. Yeah, bro, silent as fuck. Right, yo, People who yo, shout at you—that's gnarly. Yo, same oh, shit. Oh, yeah, you, yo, like bro, that, you're yeah. witty. You're witty as fuck. <laughs> um, so he gives you your first deal. Yeah, it was uh, February 2020. COVID. Yeah. So I was doing COVID. I was doing a a vandalism claim for one of the properties that they have. And uh, it was Valentine's Day. I believe it was February 14th of 2020. Um, I went out to inspect the property. But how I know this vividly, and if you guys go back and you do your research and Google whatever, you'll find out that the talk of COVID started happening in February. Yeah. It oh, was, no, it was, that. It was yeah. New Year's it was, Eve. It was, it was, it was a little salt bait. I remember, bait. I remember yeah, little, um, it was December, December, New Year's yeah. Eve, they're still talking about yeah. Yeah. But it's it's not, they, US, they were talking yeah. about China. Or China. Or China. China. And it was <laughs> just China. in China, right? It was yeah. just, it was just an isolated Wuhan. thing. Wuhan. Yeah, Be, we were aware, but we weren't worried. Yeah, yeah, you, know, yeah, I mean, like, yeah you fucking had swine flu, N1H1, all that bullshit. We've, we've lived through it all. Fuck them. You know, they fucked up, they fucked up again. We'll get through it. It's was a hoax, but whatever. That's my personal opinion. We're not... Bros. Yeah, it's yeah, another yeah, podcast, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? It's another a whole podcast, other shit. Yeah. But I get down with it. Call me back. <laughs> um, so my problem with that fucking claim, bro, is that it was a vandalism claim where, bro, they fucked this house like up. Graffiti or bro, no, they they threw fucking concrete down the toilet. What? Oh, God, God, damn, I heard that's that the worst. Are you they ripped about plumbings, yeah, pull, bro. They they shit. ripped cabinets off the kitchen what walls. The fuck they for? who knows? People are animals. They just are. So my issue was I needed uh, Tampa PD to write me a police report, walk into the property with me, and just kind of like notate the shit that I was about to claim because it's a fucking claim. Vandalism is a claim. It's covered in your in your HO3 policy, clearly, unless it's excluded. Uh, vandalism is a covered peril. The issue with this fucking Tampa Police Department, I'm going to call them out because, bro, you're, you're here to serve and protect and you didn't do shit. You were scared about COVID and you didn't walk into this house with me to write a police report and you told me that you just weren't going to do it. There was nobody in the house? There was nobody in the house. They already left so and vacated what are they, the house. What are, they, what are they scared about? They were scared about COVID and what the, the government and Fox News was telling them about COVID. And, uh, you know, I was willing to do whatever, wear my mask, do whatever he wanted to do to feel comfortable. But Tampa Police Department refused to go up into this house with me 
and record the findings. It is February 14th. It's February 14th, 2020. It really pops off Valentine's, Valentine's, Valentine's Day. Day. Valentine's Day. I remember it because, you know, I have a wife. You know, I got a kid. I got you. I got shit to remember. Yeah. And these are things that kind of just stick in your head as, and what claims. But I got stories for days, you know. I feel like an old man already. So like, I got a story go for days. So we didn't go in because the motherfucker wouldn't go in with me. So um, it was a trouble thing for me because what I didn't know was... Were you able to show him pictures or anything? I, I so showed him could, pictures. I showed him. So, so part of a, a big thing about what we do is proof and having to prove whatever the desk adjuster on their side is saying that, hey, bro, you're wrong, right? So what my thing was is that they were they 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 were refusing. The carrier was refusing to admit that it was vandalism. So what they were requiring of us, the insured and myself, was a police report. Like this is easy. The police. This is what they're there for, hmm. right? Call up TPD, number one, TPD couldn't find the damn address. Gave them the address. I'm standing out front. I'm like, it's I'm here. They drive past. <laughs> they come Dark back. man, drive by. You know what's funny about it? It was a black cop. <laughs> but it was a black community. And maybe he was scared. I don't know, man. I'm not here to bash them. But I was that just same like, dude. That happened with my smoke shop. They drove past my smoke shop. I'm just shop here to tell you happened. that it sucks when an agency is there to serve and protect. And my dad's retired Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office. Let it be on record. He's retired 28 years with the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office, who I have the utmost respect for because they serve and protect every time I've needed them to come out Shout holler. Out Shout out yeah, Chronister. Shout out Chronister. And Chronister, hey, I'm trying hey, to holler at Grady you. Grady Judd. I love that guy. Yeah, yeah he's fucking yeah. hilarious, Chronister, I'm trying to holler at you about some other stuff, so get at me. I'm on IG. I hit you up the other day. Call me back. Hey, um, hey, hey you know what? With that being said, once again, like, comment, and subscribe if you want to. Be on the podcast. If you think you have an interesting story, you know, leave a comment, drop it down in YouTube. Um, we're on Spotify, iTunes, Audible, all the podcast platforms, as well as all socials, uh, with the exception of LinkedIn, I think. Um, LinkedIn is what popped off for me. Yeah, yeah. LinkedIn Dick Hunter. Good. Dick Hunter found Dick, Dick Hunter. Dick Hunter. So if you're looking for a Dick Hunter, <laughs> I'm just fucking with you. Uh, we'll be right back. <laughs>Listen, guys, you do not have to travel the beaten path. You need to go off on your own and make your own trail. And that is what it seems like you have done, D, where you have navigated the trail of corporate America and then got off on the beaten trail to pursue entrepreneurship. And I think where we left off was talking about... I don't know where we left Emily off. Street. Emily, Emily Street. Street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where the cops would Which go in. Which was February 2020. 14, February 14, that, that, that wasn't Emily Street, but it was a vandalism. I know. It was uh, West hood. Boulevard. West that, Boulevard. West Boulevard. West Boulevard. So, uh, was one of your first claims. Yeah. Which was Ramsey's house, I'm assuming. It was, it was, it was connected with, with, with Ramsey, absolutely. And Brian. And Brian. We've had a, a Brian Aponte on. Yeah, no doubt. Actually, yeah. I, I watched the Brian Aponte podcast. Yeah, he's very good. He's a very smart dude. And uh, I, I. Very smart. I very, I respect. That <laughs> yo be, yo, yo, be. Yeah. I respect Brian the Pope, yeah. I do, dog, and I love you, bros. You know, what I'm saying like uh, a lot of you guys have a connection to me and why I'm successful today too. I'm actually running a claim right now. It's a vandalism claim uh, for Ramsey and Brian. That's another story too. But yeah. can real estate um, photography help the public claims adjusting? Real estate photography. Yeah. So you, what you, what you what, what comes in? For your evidence what like comes what in handy drone? there what, what drones so I, I, drone. I i use my own drone but are you what? part 107 certified yeah bro i am and my my drone is 249 grams yes so faa <laughs> 249 <laughs> grams 249 grams i, 249 I operate grams. i operate under Damn, the dog, radar 249 grams of what <laughs> <laughs> that's another podcast <laughs> um just trying to make some money. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways I, I, i'm going back to this vandalism claim back in 2020 where COVID and all this shit. So anyways, my, 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 my issue with that claim is that I didn't get cooperation from the Tampa D, T, TPD and the desk adjuster held his hat that I couldn't provide proof um, from an agency, from a government agency that this was vandalism. So they denied the claim and we had to move on because what happened over the next several weeks was very real to the whole world and just life got shut down as we know it. That claim never evolved to anything and it's unfortunate that because of the non-cooperation of people at the front end, COVID, that we couldn't prevent and just things. You know, there's a lot of balls always being juggled. Some you can control. Some get lit on fire. Some get fucking jelly put on. I mean, there's all kinds of shit that goes on. 
that I can't predict an acclaim process, but this particular one was one where I could tell you that COVID was the preventing nemesis of, of this taking off, and it was the beginning of my oh shit moment. Yeah, because you just started. My oh shit moment was we're into 2020. I've run out of money. You know, my savings was wife, gone. Wife's still working. Though. Wife's still working, yeah. but, you know, you help where you can, right? You know, it's hard to put a family needs budget on one person when it was a very different swing, you know, not too long before that. And the plan was to get us through 2019, not a portion of 2020. You know, this thing was supposed to be done, taken off and flying before 2019 even was over. But it didn't because, you know, number one, apprenticeship got pushed back a couple of months. Nobody could see the future into COVID and then COVID took over. The good and bad news about that story is that the pocketbook's running dry, but oh shit, you know what? We ain't got to go drive nowhere. You know, people are being lenient with the bills, you yeah. know, this is that. You got to drop your kid breaks. off at school. You got to drop your kid off. You know, all these transitions are happening. The world changed again. I'm not going to get into that because we all know it. We all lived it. So there's no yeah. need to talk about it. But in the PA shit, I was like, fuck. PA? Like, like I really, public, public adjusting. Oh, okay. Oh, sorry public adjusting I about took a shit in my pants bro because it's like now as a man you got a responsibility to your wife and your family and you made a promise and again even though you made a promise you can't control everything that happens but you still made a promise bro and to have a burden of that fall on your lady you know i don't know about y'all bro she but that yeah, yeah but, but, that, but that's yeah, why that's things. why that's why for she's better my, or worse, bro. We, we call ourselves yeah. our, our our bonnie and clyde bro and that's why because you know we understand that sometimes there's gonna be some shit where yeah, you're a family. You know, like, bro, yeah. there's 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 going to be some weight that we need to lean on each other for. And it's not forever, you know, but, you know, this was our time where I, I decided, I was like, yo, this, this, this is why we are together forever. Because if we can get through this shit, ain't nothing get else. Right. Ain't, ain't, ain't nothing else. So February 14, 2020. So how long until you got what was cool? What was cool? So, so that, that, that was the bad. That was the bad. Now let's get into the good. The good about public adjusting in 2020 is that there were very few, um, I forget the term, but like nurses were necessary, doctors were necessary, EMS were necessary. Real estate photographers were necessary. Real estate. Real it wasn't so, shutting down so, Home Depot. So, for, so, so I didn't know PayPal. about that. Yeah. I didn't know about that, but public adjusting was necessary. Oh, yeah. So we were like, ah, shit. Real estate, baby. Real here's, estate. Uh, shit. here's my break. Here's my break. You know yeah. what I mean? So um, it was this opportunity where everybody was home. Nobody was going to work. So they're on their recliner, on their bed. They're looking at their ceiling. They're like, oh, <laughs> shit, a water spot. <laughs> what do we do about that? <laughs> you know, so now they're Googling shit, and they're like, I guess somehow they find public adjusters, whatever, and we find a phone call through our Google phone number or email, and they're calling us, and shit, man, phones are ringing, bro. You know, that's cool. You know, like, they're home. We can go do inspections. We don't have to wait till after 5 p.m. when they get home from work. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, we're doing this shit. So we're on I-75. The only motherfucker on I-75, bro. This is <laughs> awesome. Yo, let's see how fast this son of a bitch go, right? <laughs> so we booking, man. We're going everywhere. We're going to Ocala. We're going to Sanibel. We're going to fucking Naples. We're going to oh, Orlando. Shit. You we're guys going... are throughout the state of Florida. Yeah, we're licensed in Florida, and there's a lot of us adjusters that are actually licensed in Texas, Colorado, North Carolina. So we have licensors throughout the state, and we're looking to get into Colorado next. Um, California is the Wild West, like literally. Um, but there's opportunity there, and we're actually, you know, I'm, I'm should, trying. To, I'm trying to find out how we actually help them out. Should with homeowners call public adjusters first before they call anybody else? Now, when you talk to a public adjuster, the absolute answer is yes, right? When you talk to legislation, their answer is no. Those guys are the worst things that you could do in your life. But my question to the viewers out here that are watching and listening to this right now, that have a home that opened their claim on their own because legislation and the politicians told them to. If you're happy with your claim today, I um, applaud um, everything that's gone on with your claim, your desk adjuster, your field adjuster, your patients, um, and everything that you had to go through to get to an amicable space. Yeah, I am not. Now, the people that have a different story, I want you to tell me your opinion about what you were told about public adjusters on September 30th of 2022.
That's a very specific date. That was very that was a day after Hurricane Ian oh. took off and went about his business and left the state of Florida alone. Now you have the people in Tallahassee on Fox News, CNN, whatever plug they can get on, saying, call your insurance company. Instead of a public adjuster. Talk and to get, your desk adjuster. And get raped. And that's what happened. They're not me. telling you that. That's of course what I, not. They're telling you that's, that's they're that's telling you to trust the system. Yeah. And, and and this is what happened to me with the roof that I just replaced through hail damage. Bro, I did not contact a public adjuster. And now because I didn't even know you guys existed until today. Listen. I had no clue. And I'm getting fucked. You got smoked. I'm getting smoked, bro. Listen, I'm getting smoked. but for the viewer, before you even go that much further, right now, who have no idea what the fuck a public adjuster does, explain to that them yeah, real quickly. You guys do. And why they need it. That's oh. simple. And let's go from there. All right. So, simply put, when you file a claim with your carrier, and I'm not going to call out any carrier, I'm just so going to call them carrier. If there's flood, <laughs> if there's. Why the, would they fall? The, the, the stuff that people file a claim on their house for are wind damage, water damage due to wind damage. That means wind caused an opening in some kind of portion of your house Shingle. that allowed water to enter and cause damage to your interior. Foundation. Um, foundation, whatever have you. I mean, so the, and then I also want to, before I get into the perils, I also want to let you know that policies are written very and the word is ambiguously, uh, and forgive me if I butchered that word, but ambiguity, ambiguity, or whatever. Look it up, Google it. It is where we can all read the Dr. Seuss book. You'll have an opinion about the book. You'll have a different opinion. You'll have a totally it's different gray. opinion. It's, it's gray. very gray. Yeah. So, so they don't um, have to pay you. So, so their opinion is uh, that's wear and tear, or the manufacturer who put that on for you didn't do it properly, and. The policy doesn't cover that, so we're going to go ahead and deny your claim. And you're like, oh, shit, I'm little old Miss Homeowner. Dang, that sucks. Now I'm going to have to find $30,000 to fix my roof, to fix the, the drywall, to fix my ceiling, and damn, do I have mold now? I got to worry about mold now? Ooh. Is it 30000 Is it 50000 Is it the 300 bucks that my carrier told me? Or is it really zero because... It's not covered in my policy. This is why the carriers win, and this is why they're worth a billion, 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 with a B. Because they don't really pay. They don't pay, but they take, right? They want your premium. They want it on the first of the month. They want it now. If you don't pay them, they're going to charge you a late fee. And if you have a mortgage, you can't escape it because the mortgage people require Escrow. that you have yeah. insurance on your property, yep. right? Yep. So all you do as the homeowner is you be like, yo, the bank's telling me I need insurance. So you call your broker, your agent, who you hope has your best interest at heart yeah. as well. Yeah, you're sure. For, you're sure <laughs> That's a whole other thing too, right? But also no, challenge your broker, challenge your agent, please. Because all they're doing is making their 800 bucks in commission, making sure you're happy and covered by How the do mortgage. You challenge them? How do you challenge them? Be knowledge. Be knowledgeable. What do you say to them? Um, like, so, hey, I'm, okay. a, I'm, a, I'm a homeowner. I call them up. What do I tell them? Perfect example is this, man. I just finished a fucking Hurricane Ian one uh, in Port Charlotte, and I had to tell the guy. My, Hurricane Ian is 2017? No, Hurricane Ian is 2022. 22. Yeah, okay. the, the last big one. The one that hit Not Irma, Fort no, Myers no, and Sanibel. Yeah. I got a lot of clients down there still suffering, unfortunately. Um, but we're fighting for them. So this client, what I had to tell him at the end of the settlement was, hey, man. I know you lost your entire fence line. I know it got knocked down. And I know that Lowe's has got an estimate out here for 20 G's for you to replace that entire fence line. How much fucking fence they got, dog? You'd be surprised what's out there, bro. I mean, people have ranches. People have cattle. Oh, okay. People have All things right. that they need to contain and Acres. protect. Lowe's material ain't cheap nowadays. Uh, yeah. you know, so so when, you, when you go through suburban Tampa, that's suburban Tampa. And people live well. They oh, have nice homes. The they, they have million-dollar homes off of Del Mabry. Yeah. yeah. But dudes, when you go off of Odessa and you go out in Dover and you go off to these off places Plant where... City. Itty bitty Plant city. Plant city. Bro, this is like vast land. And this is coverages that people pay for, right? So coverage A is your dwelling. Coverage A is if you take your building, you turn it upside down. Anything that doesn't fall to the ground, that's your coverage A. Right? So... That's what coverage A covers. Okay. If, if if something came and knocked your foundation off the slab, 
Damn, Doris. Coverage A mind. is supposed to cover you rebuilding that structure minus your contents, which is the stuff that falls. If you turn this like building, furniture, if you turn this building upside, if you turn this room upside down, the, the the desk would fall, the chairs would fall. That's not covered. Yeah, that's contents. That's coverage C. But this client had coverage B, which is uh, detached structures, which is like sheds, mother -in fences, suite. mother in law suites, mm -hmm. and people are like, yeah, I got detached something, and they're like, okay, we're gonna give you uh, five grand in coverage, and you're just sitting there like, okay, well, that's not enough. Well, you. you I can't, you're, I can't you're not tell eligible. you. It's not, it's not your job to understand your insurance coverage. Yeah, you yeah. pay for it, you think you're good. But here to the viewers, they are simply like your fucking attorney. They're, D is not. That's what it sounds you like. You know what I mean? Yeah. He knows how to go back. He knows the laws. He knows the rules. And guess what? They're going to respect him more than they're going to respect you. And he has the patience, the team to go months to get this. Um, oh, your roof is fucked. You had uh, floor damage, flood damage. Cool. Here's a thousand dollars. Get fucking real. This guy's gonna figure out a way to go uh, uh, battle tit for tat and get you sixty racks. Now that's just me so, in a nutshell. I'm just trying to get you there. Just, to let my, my, dog, my dog, my dog, my like, dog. Hey, I'm trying yo, to get you there so you can I, really explain I'm tell to you. Why. You I'm gonna tell you. You, you, you try like to do it yourself. I'm gonna tell you. You try to do it yourself. You're gonna get fucked. I'm gonna tell you where hey, this passion comes from. And I, got I know fucked. ten guys. I, this guy. I'm gonna tell you where already. this passion comes from. Why I love this motherfucker to life and forever and always. They call him Smiley. We've done business together. <laughs> we've done business together. <laughs> and where they he gave I, me a job where, at South Eastern. No, 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 uh, no, no, no. Fuck that. Fuck that. Fuck that. Fuck that. We're talking about PA shit. No, thank you, bro. Well, that's history. Yo, yo, yo. But we rock. We we rock. Yo, just know that we are brothers for. Oh yeah. Like we know each other. Big shows. He's always been there. All right. You know what I'm saying? He's family, bro. He's invited to without without the invite, he can show up, bro. You know that's that's the type of shit. But just to let you know where this passion comes from with this public adjusting is that. I've been able to show some of my close friends and family what this shit is about. So I think when Christian called me maybe the first time to help him out, he called me with maybe a curiosity. I don't think there was an expectation. I don't think there was a, correct me, step in if I'm wrong, bro. But like, I was just like, thank you for this opportunity. Let me rock with it. Yeah, to lead them the right way. And all of a sudden, instead of a base hit, it turns to a fucking grand slam. You didn't, you didn't know what it was, right? <clears throat> at I knew the what time, he could do. At the time, at the time, right? No, not, called? not. Oh, Be, because because I know you, you're in the position that I'm in right now because I didn't know this. No, shit but I at still know, I still knew that a person just trying to combat your insurance company, bro. Whether it's car insurance, whether it's home insurance, like medical, they're not your fucking friends. They're not medical. Like I'll I'll yeah. never forget. I'm going. I'm headed to Miami medical to DJ. Fuck me too. I'm headed to Miami DJ. I have a brand new. Well, it, it don't even matter. Mm. I. Listen. You had a brand new what? Well, at the time, hey, tell him. It, tell him. Tell him. Tell him what it was. Was it a 745? A a, a it was Cadillac, a big It was a, a big one. At the a big boy STS. Cadillac STS. And STD? STD. You heard it here, folks. <laughs> but listen, I'm headed to Miami actually for a video shoot. DJ Cal video shoot. All of a sudden, a metal fucking hook. That's, that's the way I can describe it. Falls off a bed of a truck. Hits, I try to swerve, hits my car door. And do you remember the movie Grease? Yeah. Where they go, they, yeah. have, the, they have the fucking things on the wheels. Yeah. And it, that's what it did to my I remember that. driver's I'm... side door. I come back. I'm like, all right, I'll figure it out when I come back. On my way back to Tampa, I call insurance. Call him up. Hey, how's it going? Need a, need a uh, Geico. Need to do a claim. This is what happened. Okay, I'm on I, uh, <clears throat> 75. A piece of metal or a hook is headed towards my car. I swerve to try and avoid it. But it still contacts my car, ruins my door, puts a hole in it. Okay, sir, hold on real quick. I was back. Sir, did you say you swerved? Seconds. You swerved out of the way? Yeah, I tried to swerve so I wouldn't hit it. Oh, sir, because you swerved, we can't we can't cover you. Fucked. And long story short, that's a little, that's a little nut. Hey, okay. Take it out. Take it out. Okay, but we won't be right back because he's gonna tell you why you need him. Welcome back to Happy Hour Holidays. We're here with D, public adjuster for Hunter Claims. I remember closer. Because it doesn't capture. Okay. You want me to start again? Yeah. Yeah, sure. All right. Hi, guys. Welcome back to Happy Hour Holidays. We're here with D, uh, public adjuster for Hunter Claims. D, why is it so important to call a public adjuster first before calling the insurance company? I would say the biggest reason is, is because you, as an individual, are busy with what you're good at. 
um, or what's important to you, like your life, your family. If you're a doctor, I don't think you have so much time on your hands to be calling and dealing with your desk adjuster. If you're a, a professional and your time is more valued in what you do for a living to make you money, because the claims process will drain every minute that is your spare minute and is not your spare minute. I mean, every moment of your life, it will consume you, which is why it is very beneficial to get a public adjuster involved from the beginning. The benefits of that is simply this. We know what to document. We know what to look for. We're educated on what the claims policy looks like. We're educated on what the coverages are. We're educated on what the limitations are. We're educated on your your, your exclusions, your addendums. There's These are all terms that you probably have heard them. Um, and not to discredit anyone's education, but you probably don't know what they mean in the terms of your policy and what your policy covers. Christian earlier mentioned that you swerved to miss a metal object. And because you used the word swerve, you were denied, right? Yep. So this is what it fucks a lot of the clients because they'll say, oh yeah, I had claim. Uh, it's been happening for four weeks. And then all of a sudden the, the roof caved in. That's your death. The second that you gave them an inkling of a notion that this has been happening and that you noticed it, but you just didn't call it in because your roof didn't fall in until it did, they're going to tell you that you um, did not follow the rules of your policy and you did not report the claim timely and you did everything wrong and you are the reason why we are denying this claim. And you are fucked. And you are fucked. <laughs> so, so, so my reasoning with this is, guys, again, I'm not a salesperson, bro. I, 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 the last are person. You sure? the are la you no, sure? No, fuck that. Fuck that. No, it's it's not about sales, bro. I swear to God. I swear to God. Listen, <laughs> listen, listen. Anybody that knows me, bro, you can vouch. You know me forever. Half my life, bro. Used to make records hits by throwing them out of your top yep. window. I say, how you make a record a hit? Uh, you throw them out of your car and smash them. Smash them on the road, bro. <laughs> I'll still make a hit. Like, bro. A piece of shit record, we'll still smash them. This <laughs> motherfucker went by Infamous 13 back in high school, and I didn't really know him then, but I kind of knew what he was about. So I'm just bringing shit up because he'd been knowing me for a hot minute, right? So call my bullshit. If I'm a motherfucker that comes out and don't know what I'm talking about, call me out on that because... What this podcast I think today is about is letting the people know in Tampa, Clearwater, St. Pete, Naples, Naples. I don't Miami. care where you're at, Tallahassee, Miami. Um, if your Miami adjuster is not doing you right, and again, I'm not out here trying to slander, but if you just want a second opinion, we do we do policy reviews, no cost. If you want to make sure that your agent or your broker didn't fuck you and didn't give you enough of your fence coverage that you need in case that shit gets wiped out in another Hurricane Ian Cap 5, your fence is going down in a Cap 5. And if you have a $20,000 fence with $5,000 worth of coverage and coverage B, guess what you're getting for your fence? $5,000. And you're only getting that if you hired a PA. If you did it on your own, they're going to make you think that it was your fault that the hurricane came and wiped your shit out. That's you what they're trained to do. You don't have time. You're not educated enough in it. And it's not your profession. So simply, if you just look like a person like me, Ramsey, Brian, if, if our thing is to keep properties rolling, uh, rehabs going, I'm going to hire a professional who knows what the fuck he's talking about and is going to come to bat for me and basically get me the win. I'm not going to just like it could be something as simple as tiling a bathroom. Guess what? You know what? If I watch enough YouTube videos, I could probably do it. But do I want to do it? No, because my time is better spent. Right. Uh, <laughs> other places trying to do more deals simply as that so <laughs> just the fact you're gonna get fucked you don't know the rules they're gonna find a way around it i would make that mistake the roof's been leaking for four weeks sorry sir you're fucked you should have called you could have should have called week one right this guy knows all public adjusters knows i mean the the amount of people you've helped that i know or don't know i mean the the proof is in the pudding and this podcast is just hey no one's selling any viewers anything it's just about being educated and informed that's it on yeah. what they can do for you that's and then, it and then another thing d you were saying that hey legislation is always changing yes hey other oh, yeah. people we're not we're not up to par on that 
But how do you keep updated with all the legislation that changes continuously? Thank you for that question. It's a very important question. So thank you for that. Um, As public adjusters, we're not just out here adjusting claims because that's what we're here to do. Um, We're also tasked with being on top of our shit, right? So our education needs to be um, current. It needs to be on point and we need to know what Tallahassee is talking about all the time. So to answer your question, um, we're required by the state of Florida and um, we're to complete 24 hours of uh, CEUs, continuing, continuing education, education units, courses. right? Just like accountants, just like, accountants, just like an just attorney, like realtors, just like uh, yeah. everybody's got these set of rules to abide by, right? And um, in order to make sure that we're doing the best for our policyholders, the people who we, re- we represent, um, we have to be educated. And that's another big thing that you're paying for in our service is that we know the appropriate way from if we're going to quarterback it from day one, let's say you've never had a claim, right? You're you, you just know that there's this 800 number on your policy that says, call me if you have a claim. So in all innocence, uh, you call the number because a windstorm came through. And now you're mentioning, hey, four weeks ago, this windstorm came by. It was really tough and it blew a shingle off and my kitchen has uh, water damage in it now. Well, Mrs. So-and-so, I'm sorry to hear about your damages, but because you failed to report timely, we cannot afford you coverage. Fuck insurance companies, bro. And listen, I'm, I'm not here to villainize or whatever about insurance companies. What I am here to do. You're giving real world. What I'm here to do is, guys. Don't pretend that you're going to win because their sole job is to make this. um, I always bring up Pythagorean's theorem because I don't know shit about algebra. And that word right there just throws me for a fucking loop. And that's what they are here to do. There's also this great book out there. It's uh, by Chip Merlin, uh, Merlin Law Group. He's a big uh, attorney out here in Tampa, but it's uh, Delayed and I Defend. If I have those words flip flopped, I apologize, Chip. But delay, um, deny, defend. Yeah, and that's like I'm it. assuming that's their playbook. First delay, then deny. If you go, if they're smart enough to have a public adjuster or take you to take you to battle, then you defend. Correct. And to wrap up, we, like it, to yeah. wrap up what we've been talking about here today, those three words are what your desk adjuster is there to do. If you have five thousand in damage. 50,000 in damage or 500,000 in damage. Guys, I, on Sanibel, on the island of Sanibel alone, I've got 2 million in damages on three properties. Three properties, collectively 2 million in damage. What's today's date? 11 28. The storm date was November 29, 2023. Today's date is November 28th. 2023. Did I say that right? No, no it, was, it was 22. Was last 22, year. 22 of last September year. September 22, 2022 of last year. Of last year. Yeah. And this year is 2023. So That's we a are year now. Later. We're Over now, a year. We're, we're actually Over. 14 months, if my math is no, you're correct. Right. You're right. You're right. No, probably right. to the date tomorrow. Yeah. That these people still haven't gotten. And I know we're running out of time and I can't scroll through my phone right now, but I could show you some shit in my phone of damages that are just like. You would think that you were in the Gaza Strip, and not to make light of that right now, but... Or maybe even in, like, Trinidad. I'm just talking about, bro, it's bad. <laughs> it's fucking bad. It looked like nuclear bombs went off. And for something that bad, to, for them to be like, uh, I don't know, you're not really covered. These are, and, 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 so, 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 show you they're so, not on your So, team. I also want to hit home with a real-life story, too. So, one of my guys on Sanibel... You got 10 minutes, bro. You got time. Yeah, yeah. All right, cool. So, so yeah. this... this don't pe- feel rushed. Pe- no, no, people should know. People should know this shit. And what I do gets emotional too, right? Because you you, you become a part of people's lives for a long time. You see the destruction you, you, you of see families. what they go through. Yeah. You see destruction of family, right? Asset Some of these people home. lost family members, dogs, mm-hmm. cats, a house. Yep. So, you know, you think about Sanibel, you think about uh people of uh, they're on Sanibel, they Things must not be so bad, you know. They got a house on Sanibel. Well, it's pretty rich. It doesn't, you know. Yeah, I but can still, agree. It doesn't matter yeah, because the still. fact of the matter is, you have a property on Sanibel that you've paid for, and that you've also paid coverage for. My one client, 
Um, and he sticks out so vivid because he's been with me since December. Can he you signed, name him? Or? He, I, I won't. Okay. I won't. Um, but it's very common, right? So his name is the same as my insureds, right? If you haven't called me, it's because your carrier has done you right. If you've called me, it's because you're dealing with this shit. And I'm sad to say it happens way too often than people realize. And people want to put the blame on why your premiums are tripled in the last year or two. It ain't nobody's fault except for the insurance company. They're not paying properly. And if they paid properly, there would not be a need for me. Guys, I, I'm here to work like how we all are, right? But when I look at my files, and I've got over 100 files currently. When I look at my files, and I do my file review, I make sure I do a file review monthly or more. And I see why these things are not being paid. It really hurts my heart because then you hear about legislation talking about attorneys and attorney fees mm -hmm. and how this stuff is turning into a wild, wild west because the attorneys are charging this, this, and that, and the other. Guess what? Out of the 100 plus files that I have on my desk, I'd say the percentage is less than 3 4% of clients that want to even get an attorney involved. They called me as a public adjuster because nobody wants to sue anybody. There's no reason to sue anybody. There's a policy in effect. The hurricane happened. Sorry. The hurricane happened. The policy says that you cover my wind damage and water damage due to a wind created opening. But it's 14 months later and you still haven't paid me properly or even a red cent. And you know what the hardest job for Daryl is? D is me calling my client on Sanibel and saying, I need you to send me cancel checks for your roof, cancel checks for your mold remediation. What are cancel checks? Cancel checks. These are, th this is money that my client has paid for out of pocket. Oh, okay. Already cashed. This, this Already particular cashed. gentleman, <laughs> and not every one of my clients. Because you can't wait a year. You yeah, can't. Yeah, 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 you can't. Yeah. But let me I tell you this on. too. Not every one of my clients, this might be the one of my clients that's able to do this has come out of pocket $200,000 plus oh, fuck. in canceled checks that I have sent to his carrier on three occasions. Bro, that's ridiculous. The first occasion, he couldn't read it because he didn't want to zoom in on the file. The second occasion is because he didn't get all the files because the company email didn't allow him to access all of my attachments. Could you have just mailed the checks? This is what we're down to right now. We're mailing the physical copy. Well, the copies, right? Because they're, they're creating gonna, reasons. They're creating so reasons, so brother. And they and they see that my my client might be, I can say this, my client might be on the edge of elderly, and maybe he might get frustrated. And quit if we and go away. With, yeah. You know what, Daryl? We've tried for 14 months. They've seen that I've, eh, you know what? I'm just going to give up. You know what? They win. They win. The moment that my client says, Daryl is 14 months, I don't know what else we could do. Now, what gets hard for me is that, guys, there's a thousand and one reasons for them to pay this claim. And I have to go in front of my client and explain something as elementary as pre-K. I don't know how to say this to you, Mr. Client, without sounding like a complete ass. But this is the shit that I'm being fed. This is the shit that I'm being asked to ask you for. And I am embarrassed to ask you for this. But we have to have it to say that we've done it, to say that we've obliged, that we've cooperated, and that we've not impeded any investigation. Everything that we do in a positive direction, they will do everything in their effort to show you that you've done it wrong, incorrect, and that you don't deserve the award that your policy entitles you to. What are the steps after that, then? So there are steps after the public Can adjuster. Can you appeal? Yes. Have a, so, a third party. Yeah. Uh, so the, the the the, the so the, the the claims process. Just know that from a public adjuster standpoint, we have options available to us. And my my goal is to work with my counterpart. So at every carrier, there's a desk adjuster. I am that person's counterpart. I am their equal. I am to show them that we are here uh, at a discrepancy. We agree that there's a discrepancy, mm -hmm. but we're here to work amicably. And this is the term 
that nobody's here shouting and blazing guns and demanding this and demanding that. But we wouldn't be here if your estimate was so insanely low, right? Now you're in complaining about my estimate that is insanely high. Well, now I'm challenging you. I wouldn't be here if yours was so insanely low. So let's find this middle ground. Mm -hmm. Let's let this go away. I'm here to play nice. I'm nobody's enemy at this point. If you can see it for what it's worth, we're here to settle. Yeah. There's mediation steps. If me and the desk adjuster can't, can't see eye to eye for some reason, there's mediation. Then after mediation, there's a lot of policies that allow for the appraisal. These are other things. These are other options that are third party of, appraisal. Uh, yeah, they're right. available. And as a public adjuster, I'm also available for appraisals as well. I'm an appraiser. I'm a certified appraiser. Oh shit. Oh, cool. um, so the long story short is, guys, at the end of the day, if you've not had a claim before, you think that it's as clear as day, ABC, one, two, three, call my insurance carrier. They're going to come out. They'll assess the damages. They'll uh, attach a dollar amount to it. They'll pay me. I'll make the repairs, and I'm on my with my life. And on top of that, also, so we got two met minutes, guys. Clients. We got two minutes. One of two your minutes. clients, in case the viewers wondering, if I make a claim, will they, did, will they drop me? Will they raise my insurance rate? Citizens can't. Uh, Malcolm met with him. You did some work with him, whether it be the roof or whatnot. Mm -hmm. uh, he said they didn't raise the rate and they didn't drop him because now they know a brand new roof is on his property. Correct. So they're not going to have to pay for shit. So, no, they didn't drop him. They didn't raise his insurance rates. And thank you for pointing that out because... A lot whether, of people think that. Well, 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 that. Whether you file a claim or not, Malcolm Malcolm's insurance company saw him as an asset now versus the opposite mm -hmm. because now he's protected with a brand new roof and he's good for the next 20 years to come. Yep. Which means they're so, not so, right. so they he's don't good. have to replace the roof again. Ma Ma Malcolm's yeah. good with paying his premium and moving forward with his said insurance company. Now, let's say you have a claim. Shit, we got one minute, man. You have a claim. We you have a claim. Minute. You have a claim and uh, you want to file this claim and um, you're like, damn, my insurance is going to go through the roof. Guys, the end of the story is you live in fucking Florida. This is a luxury state, whether you want to realize it or not, whether you live in the slums on MLK. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> or if you live in Tampa Palms, you fucking put into this shit. You deserve what you're owed, right? At the end of the day, don't waste the time. It's a fucking game. Don't realize by the time it's too late. Um, this stuff doesn't take... You know, a couple of weeks to do. It takes some time, it takes some effort, it takes some data collection. So call your PA. Um, I'm Daryl James, Hunter Claims, 813-600-9093, or Daryl, D-A-R-R-Y-L, at HunterClaims.com. And with that, we leave you. Have a great day. Subscribe, like, and follow. Oh, yeah.